Deep Rock Galactic Survivors is the love child of Deep Rock Galactic and Brotato. It has Deep Rock's characters, weapons, and core concepts, but from a different perspective and with a different gameplay loop. Don't know what Deep Rock is? Let me catch you up. Dwarves, in space, but also somehow underground, uncaring corporate overlords, diggy diggy hole, shooty shooty bugs, rock and stone, and... Bacall! I have a special place in my heart for the Deep Rock universe. My gaming diet usually looks like this. One big narrative game which I set aside evenings and weekends for, a game which doesn't feel too good to play in bite-sized chunks, usually takes a little bit of time to get me back into the flow of it. And I pair that with a casual, arcadey game that I can drop in and out of with less of a time commitment. Sometimes the second game in this equation can take over. Deep Rock Galactic was the soothing dose of gaming methadone after an overwhelming Dead by Daylight heroin addiction. <laughs> So when I saw we were getting a Deep Rock Survivor-like, I felt like I was solidly within that target market. Deep Rock Survivors... Deep Rock Survivors, which would have been a far more eloquent name than Deep Rock Galactic Survivors, which could only be harder to say if it was Deep Rock, Deep Hard, Deep Throating in the Deep South, is a survivor-like, but with one key difference. The utilization of space. So many survivor-likes don't do much with their maps. They're wide open spaces, often infinitely big, with upgrades scattered around, and not much else going on. In Deep Rock Survivors, you chip away at the walls of the map, collecting valuables, but this also allows you to sculpt the map for a tactical advantage. You can dig out the walls to create bottlenecks to funnel your enemies to you, or escape through the walls when you become overwhelmed by hordes of the aliens. It is a tool to be utilized like any other in your arsenal. In Survivors, the map comes in a few flavors. Shiny, Hot, Spiky, and Sonic. All your favorite dwarves are here, from Squeaky to Chonky, with a wider range of weapons to mix and match, offering different playstyles between each class. Speaking of style, I love the visuals in this game. They actually put me off a little when I initially saw the trailers, but seeing it in motion and playing it myself, they're just the right mix of being not too busy and are really nice to look at. I really do appreciate the art style, uh, way more than, than I thought I would. So are there any areas in the game that I didn't appreciate? There are a few. The weapon leveling up system can be a bit frustrating. You can't fully experience a weapon in one run. You have to fully level it up first, which unlocks its true upgrades in future runs. This doesn't feel good. It makes some decent weapons feel really bad to start with, and just kind of feels like padding out. Um, it almost punishes you for using new weapons. If you have one takeaway from this video, it's right here. Prioritize fully upgrading your weapons fully as soon as possible. Falling a few levels short in a run and having to do it again feels so bad. Don't spread around the XP, focus it in one area. Progression is a little weird as well. The game is so anal about unlocking higher levels. Usually you'd think beating a level on one difficulty would unlock the next, but no, not here. You must complete three specific challenges, which don't even need to be done on the preceding level, and be a certain overall level on your character to progress. This is annoying as A, maybe I just want to play Engineer on Crystalline Caverns all day, and you're making me play other characters and doing other things to unlock the higher levels. And B, some are really specific. Like, look east while jerking off at 3pm on a Tuesday while thinking about Emilio Estevez. Once again, can't I just beat a level and have the next one? The worst part is some of these challenges are really not inspired, like dig 2,000 blocks of rock in one run. Am I here to fight aliens or to start a quarry? At least they're not too RNG dependent, at least from what I've seen so far, but it's still, it still, it doesn't feel good. Lack of boss variety is my final flaw to mention. This is due to be addressed in the roadmap, which you can see on screen right now, 
but at present there is only one boss, who shows up at the end of every run. He's clocking in some serious overtime. I do look forward to seeing which Deep Rock Galactic enemies will start showing up here, but for now, each run feels like it's ending with a little bit of deja vu. Didn't I get you already? Lucky for Deep Rock survivors is gameplay is really solid and enjoyable. If most other games got so nitpicky, they wouldn't get so much of my time, but Deep Rock sprinkles in a decent amount of variety to stop the tedium that some survivor likes suffer from. With the team of Deep Rock Galactic behind it, though not the main devs of this game, still very involved, I know this will continue to get loads of support post-launch. With its solid price point and bright future, I highly recommend Deep Rock Survivors. Oh, and, and it runs really good on, on Steam Deck too. Remember when this channel focused on that? But who is your favorite dwarf? And why is it the engineer? Tell me in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, work that bell, all those other things that people say in these videos. And I'll see you next time with an, another roguelike, probably. I think I have a solid comfort zone. Maybe recommend me a non-roguelike game to review. That's like an indie game. It's cheap. Or if you want to send me a game, do it. Anyway, okay, bye.